hopefully this um, looks all right and everything. But um, I just wanted to, um, you know, just go go off a little off cuff for this episode this year, this first episode. You know, um, 2024 has started off, um, you know, a lot of things were expected, a lot of things weren't expected. But today I'm going to talk to you guys about, about anger. Not, not, not everybody else's anger or um, the cultural anger or, you know, other people's anger. Today I'm going to talk to you about my anger. Um, you know, this has been a, and bear with me if you hear some ums and uhs, you know, that's just, that's, that's me pausing to process, you know, how to properly communicate, you know, an idea that, that, or a thought in a palatable, you know, non-offensive way as best I can, praise God. But, uh, <laughs> You know, which is kind of interesting. That, but that speaks to a lot of, you know, where my anger is derived from. It's derived from nearly 50 years of guarding, you know, my speech, my conduct, my, you know, what, you know, what I'm presenting to the world. But, you know, that's, that's part of, you know, many factors that play into my anger. But... It's not enough. I'm not, you know, today I'm not going to just talk about my anger and why I'm angry and why I'm, you know, but it's the biggest part about it is, is understanding, you know, how it affects others and, you know, how it affects, you know, everything that I do and, and, you know, the reasons for and why, you know, some, some know, some don't know. Now this year, as, as this year's began, you know, one of the things when it comes to communicating, I, I you know, I struggle to, to, to figure out what to communicate and what not to communicate about, you know, myself and, you know, what goes on and so forth. But I, I do want to communicate, you know, this year started off, you know, we lost my father. You know, he was, he was my mentor, not just my father, but my mentor, you know, business partner, you know, just all around the smartest man I've ever known. Now, we expected it and... The year started off, he passed away on January the 8th. And, you know, he leaves, a, he set a high bar, a very high bar for me, for my family, for, for, for the world, in my opinion. He set a very high bar, you know, and, you know, he told me so much. He taught me so much and showed me so much. But when it comes to the anger, you know, the anger runs deeper. My anger you know, runs far past when, you know, the, the 50 years of my life, you know, you know, to the, to the, you know, almost 87 years of his life, you know, extends past him to my grandfather and, and so forth. You know, it's, 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 you know, as we, we talk about breaking, you know, um, um, generational curses and, 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 and so forth, but unfortunately, we're perpetuating them because, because culturally and societally, things are changing, things are improving, but they're improving at a slow rate for the human condition, as it's accelerating fast for the cultural condition, you know, you know, with technology and so forth. But when I talk about anger. One of the things that I that I have to identify myself for myself is first of all, you no, know, not just who am I, but whose am I? You know, I belong I belong to, you know, the kingdom of God. You know, I am I am a child of God. You know, I was a child of my my, my earthly father and my and my heavenly father. You know, my creators. That's what I have to remember. That's what I have to remind myself of continually and constantly. Um, you know, recently I've had, you know, bursts of anger that I haven't experienced in a long time. And part of it is, is in grief, sure. But in holding myself accountable, the, 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 the reality of it is, is this, you know, you know, 
losing my father is 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 not the 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 main reason for my anger, you know, my angry outbursts. My angry outbursts are coming from, you know, from years of navigating, <laughs> you know, navigating the world. Um, unlike most people and, and realizing I move differently, um, I operate differently. You know, even as I said here, I, I, this is a, a piece of wood. You know, I, a few years ago, I... I you know, took some pieces of wood from from out here at home that, that came down during the storms and everything, and there were the certain pieces that spoke to me, and I'd never done it. I mean, I've never carved any wood or etched any wood or anything like that, but I just, you know, from like a, like a hobby, you know, just, you know, found a couple pieces of wood with a story to it that came down during the storm and, and you know, just, you know, put some messages, some Bible verses on them and just, you know, really, you know, Really, you know, let the wood and let the Lord speak to me, you know, as I, as I, you know, just let whatever birth out of, you know, the creation. Because I'm not really a creative person. See, that's the thing that, that people don't know about me. I'm really not a creative person. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, you know, I, the part of my brain that's, that's, that's the dominant side of my brain is, is the logical side, not the creative side at all. To the effect that, um, I don't, really have a lot of um, creativity in me, not naturally. I mean, I, you know, so the things that I create, I have to really, you know, feel and think about, you know, to create them, but, you know, and they're not, you know, not very, art, you know, artistic, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not the most beautiful things in the world, but, you know, they're, they're sincere from my heart. And so as I, this, this one here is my personal one and it, and, you know, and it has a couple of Bible verses that, that, you know, God really spoke into me, you know, um, five years ago, you know, from Job and just really set a standard and held held me accountable. Now, out of all the years, I, you know, that I've been reading the Bible, you know, these particular passages, I have, I was actually listening to it one day. I was actually listening to it, you know, listening to an app on my phone that reads the Bible to me. And I was listening to it. You know, I'd read, I'd already read it, you know, you know, I'd already read it. But I'm listening to it. See, when you listen to something, you know, you 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 get something else and more. You get another, you know, you get some of it, you know. But you know, that's I receive, you know, I receive a message different when I when I when I when I'm when I hear it, when I hear it verbalized to me, as opposed to when I read it. But um, so when I heard. You know, God's word spoken to me, it hit me in a way and, and I and I've not been able to shake it. And I mean, I've just not, you know, and, and God spoke to me out of Job and said, gird up thy loins like a man, I demand of thee. Now, and not once, <laughs> but twice did he speak this. Now, what does that mean? Like a man? Well, we have an idea, you know. It's an unspoken idea of, of what a man is. Well, you know, throughout the Bible, the Bible, you know, describes, you know, you know, um, what it is to be a man. And and it kind of culminated in hearing that. And what the, the the part that really stuck out to me was God was 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 chastising Job. He was chastising Job. And he um, held him, held him to a standard. He held him to accountable, and he held him, you know, uh, to a level. Even after all the adversity he had gone through, he held him to a level, and made Job, you know, straighten up and tighten up as the man that God created for, you know, him to be. And I took that to heart. And what that, what that looks like, and what that means is, you know, I carry a banner. Because I'm gonna tell you what this anger's done here to, to me lately. It's caused me, I don't, you know, if, you, if you've spoken to me in person, if you talk to me, you know, if you, if you deal with me on a regular basis, you know, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't cuss. I, you know, I don't cuss. I don't say curse words. I don't use, you know, um, colorful language um, as a, as a, as a, as a conscious decision that I made some 24, 25 years ago. 
um, even before I started following the Lord, as a conscious decision I made to be an example to my to my to my son, to my children, um, because I had a real bad habit. <laughs> I had a real bad. I was really profane. I didn't care who heard it, where they heard it. I didn't care who I was talking to. I was very profane. I mean, it it was it was it was excessive. Um, it was excessive. And I made a conscious decision that I'm not going to do this anymore. And it made me, it made me, it made me start to have to find other things to say, other ways of speaking, you know, of conveying a message other than using, you know, the profane language that I, that I was accustomed to, that I had become accustomed to, I had made myself accustomed to. Because initially, as my father was raising me when I was younger, you see, this is, listen, to this is, as my father raised me, he did not raise me to be profane. You know, but as I became a teenager and a young man, you know, I took on the culture, you know, and I was part of the culture. And I, you know, I invited it, I created it, I imbibed it, and I and I really held on to it. But um, when my son was about two, you know, before he was about two, I made a conscious decision, our youngest son, you know, I made a conscious decision to stop cussing. And, you know, my, my whole conversation here is not about, you know, cussing or don't cuss. This is about me. And as I, as I've gone these years and, and, and most people that know me and have known me, know me not to cuss. Well, the past several years, this has been more of a struggle. The past seven years to be exact, it's been way more of a struggle. And I did not realize, I mean, I was good for a long time. I have I had no reason to cuss. I mean, I had no, you know, I mean, <laughs> but the past seven years have been so rocky, been so, you know, tumultuous, you know, for everybody, for the whole culture, for the whole world, you know, I found myself slipping here and there, you know, to myself, by myself, you know, under my tongue a little bit here, there, you know, and I'm like, oh God, you know, and I'm praying, you know, God really touch me, touch me, keep me, Father, keep me. And it's been a struggle for the past seven years. You know, little here, little there, you know, never, you know, in, you know, in public or to people just, you know, to myself under my breath. And, you know, I'm like, you know, God, you know, I'm constantly praying. Right. And what's culminated, you know, up until up until now is, you know, my tolerance level is, you know, I've done a lot. I've moved a lot. I've gone, you know, and I'm still, you know, still in this struggle. You know, I've gotten to the point where it's just. You know, I've let it rip a few times here in the past few weeks. And, you know, it may be understandable to culture. It may be okay to, to some and people, I know most people understand, but I have a higher bar that my Lord has established because I carry his banner as my father established in, in raising me. I carry a banner. And this is what I have to, you know, this is what the conversation today is about. You know, when it comes to anger, you know, in me and, you know, I carry a banner. I carry a banner. You know, and in carrying that banner, you know, as a man, it holds me to a standard where I have to hold myself to a standard of accountability to where it's not okay. You know, it's not okay because it's hurtful for me. If, if you ever hear me speaking that way, it's very clear that I'm extremely not doing well. I'm extremely angry. And to be honest, you know, culturally, you know, I might, you know, I might say this, but I carry a banner. See, who I answer to, I answer to my father. I carry a banner. I carry a standard. See, and this is what I was talking to um, somebody a few weeks ago. And the biggest issue I have with, you know, using the language or, or, or losing my temper is not just how, you know, culture sees me. You know, people see me, the environment sees me. They'd be like, you know, they'll give me a pass. But the same said culture will look at my God and say, see, see, if 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 he was really... If he was really the God you say he is, if he was really following, you know, if he was really, you know, you wouldn't have to feel like this. You wouldn't have to, you know, they would blame God. People would blame God. People would, you know, put the, put the fault on Jesus, you know, that I'm, you know, see, 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 
as opposed to me. See, so people wouldn't hold me accountable. They'd hold God accountable for the way that I conducted myself. And see, this is just a reality. This is not me asking a question or just, you know, I, I think, that, and I know this for a fact, you know, because I carry a banner. I carry a banner. I'm not going to, I can't, I cannot honestly say I got another, you know, if the Lord tarries, you know, Lord willing, I got another 50 years of life, you know what I'm saying, ahead of me. And the reality of it is I can't say that I'm not going to, you know, lose my temper at times. But here's the thing. I remember, I have to hold myself accountable. I carry a banner, you know, and this is, you know, like I said, this is, this is my, you know, this, this is a reminder for me, but it's, you know, it's not always in my hands, not always with me. I carry a banner that's inside of me for the Lord Jesus Christ and for my family and for my father who raised me, you know, so I carry a banner, I carry a standard. So I have to hold myself to that now. Sounds like a lot. Not to me it doesn't, but I know to everybody else it may. The reality of it is, though, my anger is no excuse for hurting those closest to me. For, you know, this is and this is this is, and it's more that, you know, it, it makes it. Nobody ever said life was easy. I don't know why everybody thinks life is easy or even supposed to be easy. <laughs> I don't know where everybody got that from. It's not in the Bible. You know, there's, there's rest, there's ease at points, you know, but the, you know, it's not, it's not in any, you know, it's not in nature, you know, go out here in the woods, you know what I'm saying? It's not out here, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, you have to be careful. You have to, you know, you know, you have to, you know, be thoughtful. You know, you have to be thoughtful. You know, you have to, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not enough to, you know, you can't allow yourself to stay ignorant and expect to grow and, 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 and flourish, you know, in, in life, period. You know, you have to hold yourself accountable into a standard, you know, that's, that's higher above us, but you got to hold yourself accountable, you know, and when it comes to anger, anger is no excuse for abdicating the banner that, that, that I carry. So, I just wanted to, you know, say, you know, say, well, you know, we got to really analyze, you know, what banner are you carrying? You know, you know, the banner that I carry for the Lord is more important than anything. That being said, it is more important that I pay attention and guard, guard, you know, what influences me, you know, what I influence, what I say and how I say it, you know, but more importantly, the why, you know, I've carried, like I say, I've carried, I'll be 50 this year and I've carried a lot of anger. You know, righteous anger. Don't don't get it twisted. You know, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of real good reasons for the anger. But the fact of the matter is, I still have to, you know, I still have to, you know, not just conduct myself, but carry myself. I still have to caretake of those around me. I still have to, you know, build and structure things with people, with other humans that require me to have a a level of 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 stability and my anger is is something that 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 I have to make sure I'm directing you know it's surgical got to be surgical with it cuz see here's the thing and I end on this anger is not a bad emotion like the word says anger but sin not see anger is a part of life Anger is a part of life. My anger is necessary. It's fuel. But now, here's the thing. But sin not. I have to direct it accordingly, surgically. It's powerful. It's, anger is power. Anger is, is, is magnified, intensified power. Passion. Anger. <laughs> anger. Done right. Purposes everybody. In a very well, in a very well, you know, in 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 in, in magnificent way, if done right, if used properly, if turned into productive, 
you know, and, 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 you know, um, you know, growth positioned, you know, thoughtful, you know, intentional ways. So anger, we don't avoid anger. We, that's where we, that's where we always lose when we avoid it, when we, you know, oppress it, you know, and suppress it and, 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 you know, tamp it out and nobody never be angry ever. In a, no, anger, but sin not. And on that note, this is our first episode of Well for the Year. Um, don't know what it looks like yet, not until I look back at it. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it makes some sense to you. And, you know, you know, we have a lot going on this year. This is actually, you know, my father left here leaving it in our hands with some duties. You know, he left he left he left me with some responsibilities. You know, and 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 as I, you know, gird up my loins, <laughs> you know, you know, like a man, you know, as God has directed, you know, my 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 job, my duty is to to advocate for others. My duty is to lift us up. 